What's up, Camping Cooks? Today's show, we're going to use this Lodge Dutch oven. It's a 12 inch, it weighs a ton, and we have a chuck roast that we're going to add some carrots and potatoes, and we're going to do it old school style with the charcoal under it, but also some on the lid, because after all, we're camp cooking, aren't we? So it's fun. So we're going to do that, and it's just going to come out great. So why don't you join us as we do some camp cooking with a large Dutch oven doing some beef and potatoes and carrots. All right, we're just gonna go ahead and add a little canola oil to this. Uh, we're gonna brown the meat in a minute but I just want to go ahead and get a little oil here. So we're just going to go ahead and generously wipe this guy down. And this pot came pre-seasoned from the factory, so we should be good. So we're just wiping the bottom here, getting the sides wiped. So let's get the meat ready. All right, now part of the fun part here. We're going to go ahead and season this. You can season this thing almost as far in advance as you want, day or two, it's up to you. I'm just going to go ahead and do it right now. We're keeping it short and simple. We're going to go ahead and use some salt, pepper, and we're going to use some garlic powder. If you've got seasoned salt or garlic salt, then that can go ahead and save you some trouble. If you want to use some kosher salt and just go ahead and, you know, get it on there generously. I'm going to go ahead and hit it with a little bit of pepper here. Get that in there. And then here's some granulated garlic. Go ahead and just get that all rubbed in. And then we're going to go ahead and flip it over. Do the same thing. And now, now it's ready for the pan. All right, we're getting closer to having some cooked food here. So I had some hot embers in here, but they don't stay hot forever. But the main idea of this goal is we're using charcoal. So in today's case, we're using Kingsford. You can use lump charcoal, whatever you want. Different brands produce different amount of ash. Otherwise, they all work about the same. So because I need to brown the meat, I want to get a good amount of heat on the bottom. So we're going to go ahead and put these down here and then I'm just going to spread it out a little bit. And then we're going to go ahead and get the Dutch oven down there. So we're going to let the Dutch oven warm up for a few minutes and then we'll get the meat in there to start browning it. All right, today we have this uh, large uh, two, uh, four and one tool. It does several things, but allows you to grab the handle for the lid only, or this wire one, which lifts the whole pot. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the lid like this. And now I can go ahead and put in our meat. Oh, that sounds tasty. So we're gonna go ahead and brown this a few minutes or so on each side till we get a little bit of brownness. And then uh, we'll add our other ingredients. All right, it's been cooking here for a few minutes. So we're gonna go ahead and flip the meat, get it brown on the other side. Wow. So that's looking kind of tasty. It's all sizzling and stuff. So we're gonna cook it for a few more minutes, get the other side browned and then we'll continue. All right, we brown both sides, and now this is how simple it is. We're just gonna go ahead and put a couple of cups of um, beef broth in here. So I got like a one quart from the store because we're out camping and we want this simple. So I'm gonna put about half of this in here. And that feels about what I'm gonna do. And we'll add more later. We'll, we will periodically check this, of course. We're gonna go ahead and put the lid on.
These are some coals I've got in this chimney. They're ready. I'm just going to go ahead and pour it into this container here. We're on rock, so I'm not worried about what's under it. Be careful, this is very hot. Different guides tell you how many briquettes to put under and on top. Our basic goal is to maintain a simmer for 90 minutes to potentially two and a half hours, depending upon the size of your meat. So what we're doing here is we already have some coals underneath along with some embers from a previous fire. I'm going to put the reckoned amount on top and we're going to then check it after a little bit to see if we have a simmer or a rapid boil. The lodge manual suggests seven on the bottom, 17 on the top. I can't tell you how many I got on the bottom right now. So we're just going to go with the 17 on the top right now and see how it is. So, and, once, and we're just using charcoal. Um, if you use lump charcoal of different sizes, then it may vary. If you're using embers from a fire, like you had a campfire, and you, you, know, you just have the glowing, you can shove some off to the side get them under bottom, and then take the other ones aside and put them on top. It's however you want to do it. But today we're using charcoal. So the goal is we're going to put some on top, and we will uh, check in a little bit. And we do have this lip on the top here that helps keep them on the lid. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. All right. Where? So what we're going to do is we're going to let this thing cook for maybe 10 minutes and we're going to check the level of boiling. And if it's, you know, simmering nicely, we'll kind of leave it alone. We're going to rotate the lid every 15 minutes to help, you know, even cooking. And then we're going to possibly put on new charcoal maybe 30 minutes or so because you know, they're gonna get spent and they're gonna produce less heat. So we may need to add more as time goes until we're done. So it's just a matter of rotating, checking, and adding more as time goes on. Halfway through the cook, when we think we have about an hour left, this should take two hours to cook the meat. So about an hour into the cook, we're gonna add the potatoes and the carrots, and then maybe with 30 minutes left to cook, I'll then add some chunked up um, onion. We've been rotating this around every 15 minutes or so just to, you know, even cooking allegedly and just looking at it. And you can see we got a nice little simmer going, right? So we have a nice simmer. Put it back on, we'll rotate that. And we're just gonna go ahead and put a couple more coals on here. All right, we have about an hour cook time left, I believe. So we're gonna go ahead and um, do a few things here. Let's. I took six, um, I don't know, medium size um, pota red potatoes here, quartered them. We're just going to go ahead and throw them in. Oh, that kind of splashed me a little bit. We're going to go ahead. There's, there's a decent amount of salt with the broth. We're going to hit this. I'm hitting this with Mrs. Dash because it's, I don't know, it's not salted, but it has a lot of different flavors in here. Garlic, pepper, all kinds of good stuff. You can hit it yourself with whatever you want individually. If you want to hit with some garlic, if you want to hit with some onion, you want to hit with some pepper, it's up to you. Um, I'm gonna put those back on. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little more liquid at this point. Uh, we're gonna add about another cup. So we added two cups at the beginning. Adding about another cup here. Make sure this thing is relatively level. I'm just gonna go ahead and rotate them around here. And 
Let's go ahead and get the lid back on. We're going to throw the carrots on in a few minutes. Let's get some more coals under. So we're going to, so we've got the pot up in the air. We're going to get some fresh coals in a few minutes here because these guys still got heat, but they're not the best, right? That should help a little bit. This guy's got legs, which allows him to sit above things. It's up to the cook to decide how many coals to add to both the bottom and the top. When you rotate and when you look at the um, liquid that's boiling, you want to maintain a simmer, you know, as smooth as possible. You don't want rapid and you don't want no simmer. You want it to be about as even as you can. So that may mean you may need to add more coals or less coals. So when you look at all these charts, they may not take into consideration your weather conditions. And even though you are cooking in a cast iron pot, maybe there's wind, maybe there's other conditions going on that might impact that. So you may need more, you may need less. So it's up to you. It's always up to the cook to decide that. So that's why I can come up with a magic number, but it may not always work, right? In fact, I don't think it's working for me right now. It's close, but I definitely need some fresh coals here. And um, we'll be back in just a little bit. All right, we're gonna go ahead and add the carrots now. I brushed off uh, this stuff because I'm gonna put some new coals on in a moment. So let's, I got about a half a pound of carrots. I'm gonna give these carrots maybe 30 minute cook time. I don't want them to break down totally. Otherwise I would have put them in at the same time I did the um, potatoes or we would just cook everything for the full two hours, right? So on that note, since we got, oh, let me show you real quickly here. We still have a nice simmering going, so I really don't want to change too much. Um, I had a bunch of coals that weren't looking good, so they were helping. Um, so I don't know if I really want to put 17 on here, especially with these guys being fresh. I mean, these guys are glowing red. So maybe half of that or something. So we'll spread them out, right? Keep the metal nice and happy, warm and stuff. So that's like three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. How's that look, boo boo? Is that reasonably spread out? Good to me. Good enough? All right. Like I said, this is kind of a guessing game, right? You put them on and you adjust as needed. We're gonna look at this anyways in about another 10 or minutes or so and rotate lit as needed. But I think we're well on our way. Next in will be our onions. All right, it's a little bit later here. We're gonna go ahead and add our final component here. I wanna get some onions in here. So let's go ahead and get those guys in there. I didn't want to add the onions earlier because I don't want them necessarily falling apart too much, right? Um, I'm not making a, a stock out of them, but I do want them to add flavor, but I also want to eat them as well. So we're going to cook this a little bit longer. I don't think we have much longer, um, maybe another 10 or 15 minutes and uh, we'll be uh, eating. All right, it's getting <laughs> a little dark out here in the woods and uh, our food's all ready. So we're gonna go ahead and put it into a half pan and then we're gonna go ahead and make a pan gravy out of the broth that we have in here. So it's all done. We just gotta get a gravy going. All right, we went ahead and took all the goodies out, put it into a half pan because we're camping and that's all we have, right? We don't have no fancy uh, Pyrex or anything else to put stuff in. So we have just the basic uh, liquid in there. Um, we have some uh, flour. I put two and a half teaspoons into room temperature beef broth. 
I put in the remainder of my beef broth. So I have a total of four cups have been added or close to it. The remainder's in the solo cup here, right? So hint to you campers out there. Solo cups are not only used on college environments, right? For drinking. So we're gonna go ahead and add the slurry. We're adding a slurry because we don't want it to lump up. We have a very slow simmer going. And we're just gonna go ahead and whisk this up until it starts to thicken. And we're just gonna make a pan gravy out of this. It's got all the great flavors from the meat and the seasonings and the beef broth. So from here, it smells just terrific. Okay, so we added a couple of coals to bring the heat up because we just pretty much had a, um, a really low simmer. So we are getting a little bit of a boil now. The pot should be heating up a little bit more. We're getting a ton of steam coming off of here. Okay, we're just stirring this here and it looks like it's thickening up. So we're probably gonna take this off the heat and we're gonna finish uh, whisking this. All right, so what we did here was we put everything into this half pan, brought it into the uh, trailer because we're out of light out there. And we thought maybe you'd like to see what it looks like, right? So what we have here is some potato and onions. Let's get some potatoes there, yummy. We'll get a few carrots, right? I know they're good for me. And then the meat here is pretty much just, I don't know, falling apart because it's cooked. So I'm just gonna, I'll take that hunk right there. Yum, yum. And then I'm gonna take some gravy here. So. Take more carrots, boo. <laughs> <laughs> That's Amy's saying she wants me to eat more carrots. <laughs> uh, imagine that. All right, I, I got four of them. So, all right, well, let's eat. All right, so as you can see, we got the meat, potatoes, carrots, got a little bit of onion in here, got some gravy. Um, I just can't wait to eat this. Get my hand fingers in there. And here's a nice big hunk. This is a chuck roast cooked for two hours and two to three bites I'm swallowing. It's that tender. It's not overcooked. It's moist. It came out great. The carrots um, still feel a little, um, I don't know if you want to say crunchy. Crisp tender. Crisp tender. Yeah. They're definitely not raw. They'd be crunch crunch, but yet they're not mushy. I don't believe in cooking carrots for a full two hours. I think they'll fall apart. And I'd even risk cooking for a full hour. I think a half hour. These are petite organics. They're already, I guess, peeled, cut to maybe a couple inches long. They're great. These are just red potatoes that I quartered. Um, and I cooked these guys for about a full hour. And they still got good texture too. They're not mushy. They're not crunchy. They're good. Flavor-wise, overall, I think this is good. The graviness adds to the flavor. Um, on a personal level, out in the dark, I got a little careless and added a little too much pepper. It went <laughs> poof. And I saw a big black, I don't know, heap. And that wasn't too good. But guess what? It just adds a little heat to it. Uh, be careful when you do it. The gravy turned out pretty good. At first we thought it was a little lumpy because when I added the slurry to it, I added it too fast. You're supposed to whisk it fast and just kind of pour it in gradually. So that's something you got to risk. Slurry is your insurance to not have lumpy gravy, but you still got to add it right. And I kind of added it wrong, but it turned out pretty good. So um, just be careful when you're doing things, especially in the dark, right? I thought cooking in a Dutch oven was quite interesting. Um, it was relatively easy. Um, our biggest problem, I guess, is... It's not as precise. Like No. no. Yeah, it's not like, oh, I want to cook it at 350 degrees. Okay. Lodge says 17 on top, 7 on the bottom. That's 350. Depending upon your environment, that may or may not work. It depends on what kind of charcoal you're using, how old it is, how often do you refresh it. There's all kinds of concerns. Long story short... 
keep an eye um, periodically. See how fast it's uh, simmering versus boiling. If you are going to make a gravy at the end, you need to have enough heat to boil. So you may need to add some charcoal. That's what we ultimately did because it just wasn't working for us. And once I did, then it thickened up in a hurry. And then we had to be careful to pull it all off without overcooking the gravy and having pretty much paste, which is another risk you can have. Overall, the Dutch oven, I've never used one before. This turned out good. I would definitely eat this food. I give it two thumbs up. But if you want one pot cooking, it is quite possible to do it that way. Um, I think it's quite in interesting to say the least. Uh, but the food did turn out well. And um, I definitely give it my little two thumbs up. Yum, yum. If you like this video, leave us a comment and a like and subscribe and make sure your notification button is all on and everything so you're notified when we have our new uploads and everything. Visit our website at www.amylearnstocook.com. We have the recipe up there. You can print it like our other cooking uh, recipes. Uh, we're on social media at Twitter and Pinterest at Amy Learns to Cook. We're on Instagram at Cooking with Amy. And join, and join us on Facebook at facebook.com slash group slash Amy Learns to Cook. Mmm. Got me a big old crispy tender onion. Mm-hmm. 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 Some more gravy here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know I'm going to clean this plate up. Mm -hmm. Now that's camping.